throughout the lifeline across the dark wave. There is a brother whom someone should save. He's somebody's brother. Or who dare, then will dare to throw out the lifeline, his peril to share. In the last verse, soon will the season of rescue be over. Soon will they drift to eternity's shore. His then, my brother, no time for delay, but throw out the lifeline and save them today. The chorus, throw out the lifeline, throw out the lifeline. Someone is drifting away. Throughout the lifeline, throughout the lifeline, someone is sinking today. Acts chapter 1, from verse number 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. I want to watch this. When they therefore will come together, they ask of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel. That is what was on their minds and their hearts. What a rebuke in verse 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father have put in his own power, but you shall receive power, unction, Authority. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Part of the earth, verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of the sight. The, the rest of the verses have to do with the message. The angel said, why are you standing gazing? Yeah. In other words, what are you looking at? Right. Get to work. But tonight I want to focus around a the theme that sometimes I struggle with in my life. Keeping the main thing, the main thing. Keeping the main thing, the main thing. Father, you know me. We ask that you'd wash and cleanse and purge from sin. Remove any hindrance, God. My desire is to honor you. Is to encourage us about the main thing. And God, we sometimes get so distracted. So many things come in the way to keep us from doing the main thing. So I pray you bind the works of darkness even tonight. My God, we pray that you'd revive our hearts, you'd open our hearts, open our eyes, open our minds to see people need the Lord. Someone is drifting. Someone is sinking. Help us tonight. And all the praise and glory be thine. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. Our text records the Lord's last meeting with his disciples. While he was on earth, Jesus Christ was preparing 
his disciples and at that time now in Acts chapter 1 he's preparing to go back home to heaven before he lived went back to heaven he leaves a command and commissioned his men to reach the world with the gospel he reminded them and reminds us tonight of what our central focus should be. He reminds us about keeping the main thing, the main thing, and you recognize in introduction that Jesus Christ had to overcome distraction. Yeah. Right. Amen. Verses 6 to 7. The disciples wanted to talk about future events. Right. Eschatology. Yes. Jesus try, Christ is trying to conduct, I believe, the world's first missions conference. And they wanted to turn a missions conference into a prophecy conference. They wanted to know when he's coming back to establish his kingdom. Could I dare say many of us now in our churches are caught unawares with doctrines and issues and things which are not too important concerning winning somebody to Christ. What is our personal issues that we go through? Jesus literally tells them that's not your business. Right. It's not for you to know the times and the seasons. And I dare say many of us are getting into debates today. Yeah, yeah. Many of us are getting ourselves trapped yeah. in a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with the main thing. Nothing has changed from Christ's time to today. Right. Amen. Theology and disputes. What a Christian Christ is literally saying to Emmanuel and to Samuel Philbert. It's good you're a member of Emmanuel Baptist Church. Thank God for that. I believe the Baptist is the closest to scripture. Right. But we'll see. It's, it's not denomination. No. Are we okay? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even having the best doctrines. Sure. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20 says we are his ambassadors. Yeah. Right. In verse number 8, he gives a clear commission and command to every missionary, every Christian, every church. None of us are immune from it. If you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ tonight, there is a clear-cut commission and command from God that we, we sidetrack get ourselves involved in so many other stuff keeping the main thing the main thing Samuel Philbert as you contemplate on that as you think about that tonight if I'm supposed to keep the main thing the main thing that I must have the right message look at verse number 8 Jesus says to them after they ask about prophecy. He says, but you shall receive power. Again, keep in verse 7. He says, that's not your business. What God have put in his hand, in his power. When is Christ coming back? When Christmas took place? Are we okay? Yeah, yeah, right. There's so many non-essentials that we fight over. 
verse 8 you shall receive power after that the holy ghost come upon you and he says and you shall be what you shall be what witnesses jesus tells his disciple that they are supposed to witness and watch this verse 8 you shall be witnesses unto me I'm supposed to be a witness about him. My, my, the focus of the message should be about him. The church should be about him. And I told you, I struggle sometimes in my life concerning that. But it's supposed to be about, about him, about Christ. We are to tell the world about Jesus Christ. We are not to talk about ourselves. Which is prevailing of our pulpits today. We talk about us. And if I don't watch it, I talk about me. My life. I talk about my beliefs. Talk about my denomination. For some of us, we think only Baptists will be in heaven. We talk about our church. We talk about our favorite preacher. And God help us, we consume with politics. The devil has a wonderful way of getting us distracted. None of these things have saving power. The church can save you. The pastor can save you. Politicians can save you. Denomination can save you. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it's the power of God unto salvation. Amen. It's the gospel that saves. Right. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what saves a man. Right. Everything else is side attraction. We to tell the message of his love, his death, his resurrection. We are to share the message of the gospel. Period. An example of illustration of that is found abundance in scripture. First cover chapter 15, 3 to 4, if you're writing down. Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10. And verse 13, and John. Chapter 3, 16, for God so loved the world. What is our message? Good. What do we tell people? <laughs> My mission, our mission, is to point people to Jesus. Right. Jesus Christ is the only hope for salvation. He's the only one that can save. Right. And sadly, we get caught up. Not, not here in Atimanuel. You guys are doing wonderful, but I get caught up. And so many distractions. Jesus Christ is the only hope for salvation. We must have the right message. I must hasten on. But there is so much in there. I must have the right message. I must also have the right method. What is this preacher? Again, let's go back to our text. Verse 8. You shall receive power after that Holy Ghost come upon you. And you shall be. We, we talk about the, the message. With us unto me. He's the sole focus of our message. 
but we are witnesses. You and I have to be witnesses. The word witness, witness refers to those who bear witness to the truth. It came to be used of those who bore ultimate witness to the truth of those who laid down their lives. The word matter comes in play. The word witness has to use as we use it today. If you see something, then you are called upon to testify or speak about what you saw. Right. Or what you know. Right. Not what we feel. True. But what we know as a fact. refers to those who testify in the law of God just like today and many people are false witnesses right. some people get paid to go and testify about something that never happened True. no credibility right. no impact speak about what you know yeah. Yeah. God is calling us to tell people about what we know and again, it's irrelevant. Yeah. Whether you are a pastor or you are a lay person. Ask a question. Let me, phrase, let me ask myself a question. I'm safer doing this way because people won't say you preaching at us. Do we know that God loves us? Yeah. Yeah. You put your hands up. You know God loves you. How many people are starving for love today in our world? In our, they say church, the community, in our school, everywhere we go, people are looking for love the wrong place. If, if you know, if you know, if we know for a fact that he loves us, that's what he's asking us to tell others. Do you know that you're saved? Yeah. Okay. You're saved? Yeah. Yeah. What he's saying is, tell someone you're saved. Yeah. Sure. Tell them what happened to you. Good. Do you know God can save people? Sure. Do I know that for a fact? Yeah. Sure. Can I testify that he's the only way? If I believe that, then I ought to tell people he's the only way. Not necessarily what Oprah believes, or the politician believes, or the philosophers believe. Right. Or even some churches believe. Yeah. But he is the only way. Right. And you and I are commissioned to tell people. It's about him. So many people are confused today about salvation. Yeah. Thing is through a church. God knew why he allow us to stay by you for a while. So many people are hurting because of religious experience they've had in churches. Yeah. Yeah. They walk away from churches. God help me. Right. Whether it's through the pastor or the deacon or somebody oh, yeah. or sharp tongue sister or brother yep. he can save he can restore he can bring back he's an expert in bringing back unto himself those people who have been hurt by churches but it has to happen. It has to happen in our churches. We've got to change. How many people are foster you know who used to come to church and all of a sudden something happens? We have examples of that. Paul in Acts chapter 26, 12 to 16. And let's read that, in fact. It's an amazing thing. And the things we try to tell people, the things I try to tell people. Acts 26. 
From verse number 12. He gives his testimony before King Agrippa. From verse 12. Whereupon as I went to Damascus, authority and commission from the chief priest at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and then we journeyed with me and when we were fallen to the earth I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew tongue Saul, Saul why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the prick and I said who art thou Lord? And he said I am Jesus whom thou persecutest persecutest but rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness. Watch this. Both of those things which thou hast seen, and those things in which I will appear unto thee. That's what he wants. We've got an illustration in John chapter 9, 10 and 12 and 17, 23. Share your experience. Hey. Don't get caught up in all the doctrinal issues. Sure. Don't get caught up in all the hurts. Yeah. It's real. Sure. And God help me preach. I remember meeting somebody who used to come to our church and their family are now in, back in church. Thank God for that. But I was young and I thought I was God's only soldier. Before somebody said anything, I would shoot. Before I knew what was happening. The folks got hurt and left the church. And I was so inexperienced and immature. I said, don't let the door hit you. God help us. I met her after that. I think two years ago. I asked her to forgive me. And we were just crying. She was crying. And I was crying. People looking at us, what's wrong with that preacher? Not just the method. Be witnesses. But we must have the right mindset. Again, look at verse number 8. You shall receive witness after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witness unto me, both where? Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria, all the oldest part of the earth. The witness in a, in a court of law is to testify to the judge and jury. But a witness to Jesus Christ must testify to the whole world. Jesus breaks it down for us here in verse 8. We begin at home and move out to the rest of the world. John Wesley may disagree with his doctrine, but he said, the world is my parish. The world is my parish. What you and I do is just contained in a little square corner. Me and my family, I'm okay in my church. While someone is drifting, while someone is seeking, people need the Lord. Regardless where they are, what their race is, people need the Lord. It's the only hope for our world. Jesus is still the answer. And he's the only answer for our world today. We must have the right mindset. We must be able to go to the rest of the world, everywhere we meet. Somebody said, everyone we meet is either saved or lost. Everyone. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man come to the Father but by me. Emmanuel Baptist Church is about to undertake something wonderful. Some great, great, something marvelous. Some of you might say it's not possible. I say sometimes in my soul it's not possible. 
But Doug, people say it's too good to be true. A lot of accusations have come out of that. How could a man start a business, contact other Christian business people and give most of the profits to missions? How, how could his heart beat to save the world? How dare you try to change the culture of missions? How dare you leave it as is? But I know, like Jeremiah, there's something burning in your heart. You can't stop. It's so hair. It's so hair. We must use every means possible. The radio. The television. Are we okay? Social media. Could, could I share something with you? I'm standing in Ambassador Baptist Church one Sunday morning preaching. When, when I got out and went to the back, they were streaming live on Facebook. There were about 900 and something people watching and listening. Out of St. Lucia. Underdeveloped country. People watching from all over the world, connected through social media. Now I admit there are a lot of wrong things in social media, but I should not prevent the Christian from using it for the gospel's sake. People need the Lord, folks. Do we believe that? That's the main thing. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Became the first giver, God himself. Yeah. That he, Jesus, left heaven's glory, yeah. being the form of God, thought not rubbish be equal with God. Yeah. But made himself of no reputation and took upon himself almost a servant. Been found and fashioned as a man, he humbled himself. He became obedient on the death, even the death of the cross. He who was rich for our sakes became poor. That this black little fellow out of St. Lucia, who nobody knows, could be rich in him. And again, I must admit, I'm I'm not where I ought to be. God knows my heart. I know I have some physical ailment. I know that. But I've determined what is on a wheelchair, I'll preach. Wherever it takes, wherever to go, I'll go. I will give this last. We also must have the right muscle. I want you to note that. That's an amazing thing. Again, look at verse number eight. But you shall receive power. Watch that word power will come back to it after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. <laughs> that muscle is God's Holy Ghost. <laughs> if our message is to have power, if our method is to be successful, if our mindset is to be right, we are going to get help from outside of us. I need to remind myself of that, and there are several things I want to say here as we close this. Jesus tells us our helper is the Holy Ghost. You know, the people in the upper room were promised the Holy Spirit in Luke chapter 24, and verse 49. Jesus said, But tarry. Wait for the Holy Ghost to come. <laughs> In Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost came, these terrified disciples who were hiding 
because of the Jews. They were fearful of the Jews. Those same guys who were fearful and in hiding became bold and stood up and preached. Acts chapter 2 verse 41 3,000 got saved. It was not their eloquence. It was not their speech or the outline that I was taught in Bible school of a poem how to be an eloquent speaker. It was not their delivery. Some people, some preachers are dramatic. They like to run around, put their feet up the pulpit. I love your preacher. He, he gets your attention. That's not where the power is. It's the power of God. The fact they were saved and indwelled by God's Holy Spirit. I want to say that again. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, you need to get saved. And when you're saved, God's Holy Spirit comes in and indwells you. And he gives you the power to do the impossible. He's the driving force, brother Doug. <laughs> the second thing, and I'm going to come back to that later. They were the fact that they were prayed up and cleaned. Prayed up and clean. There was the fact they were united in love, in heart, and purpose. They were united. They were together. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. They were together as one. We desperately need the power of God. As a result of that, there's some things I want to say. Preacher, um, Brother Jim, we were talking about reading through your Bible. I have no problems with that. But you could read your Bible a hundred, a thousand, a billion times. and could change. Praying is important. But we could stay on our knees till doomsday. It's not just it. Here's what I find in my life and in life of people about the power of God and hindrances. How I react to you and you react to me. How I speak to you and you speak to me. When I speak to you, it has to... And, and, and how, how many times I feel in this? To speak right. Powered by God's Holy Spirit. How I react to my wife and she reacts to me. Fueled by God's Holy Spirit. Doesn't matter how much we've made the outline or have, I mean, all the best scene and all that stuff. It's just emotions. But only God's Spirit can break the hardened hearts. And the word fitly spoken, how precious that is. With humility yeah. Yeah. and the power of God. Yeah. How many times have we been a hindrance to God working? Because we think we can say anything or react in any way. Let me ask you another question. How many times we refuse to make things right? We're talking about wanting the power of God on our lives. I get the preaching. I get the reading, the Bible. I get the devotions. I get all that stuff. 
but we're forgetting our spirit. Forgetting that. How I relate to you and relate to me. If, if I'm filled with the spirit of God, <laughs> as I drive in St. Lucia, I'm sure you face it too. These, these drivers not driving in their lane and driving slow and you know how I go but dog I, I want to get there and I, I start saying something and my wife will say stay in the spirit stay in the spirit and um, how many times I'm not in the spirit how many times you not in the spirit that's a hindrance for the power of God. It's a hindrance that God can use us from keeping the main thing, the main thing. I'm first to acknowledge I'm guilty. I pray God would help me to keep the main thing, the main thing. Is telling people about Christ with the right spirit. With humility. And God's Holy Spirit will break the hardened hearts. God's Holy Spirit will save the husband, will save the wife, will save the in-laws. God's Holy Spirit will bring back the backsliders. God is well able. We are the problems. Our Father, thank you so much. Lord, you keep teaching me, you keep telling me, you keep showing me. God, oh, we are so stubborn. Please help us. You, you really want to work. You really want to empower us. You really want to. Our families and our friends and our relatives and those who are struggling, those who are hurt. You, you are the remedy. You are the answer. But oh God, help us to realize that. And let you do it not us. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.